Okay, let's break up the monotony a little bit. Let's get away from some found footage and go to a horror staple that admittedly I have not seen since I was probably like 12 years old. Werewolf movies do not get enough attention in my opinion. So let's go for a Joe Dante classic, The Howling. The Howling, the one of the seminal werewolf movies. Um, when I think of werewolf movies, there are always three to come, that come to mind. You've got An American Werewolf in London, arguably the best werewolf movie ever made. You've got Ginger Snaps, in my opinion, the best werewolf movie ever made. And then you've also got The Howling. Those three movies make up the triarchy of werewolves. And it's really sad that that's pretty much all there is. I mean, there's werewolves incorporated in other movies, but as far as like standalone flicks, you don't see a whole lot of them. I mean, you can argue dog soldiers. Maybe I should give that one a second chance, but anyway, rewatching The Howling, there is a lot of good here. Um, one thing about me personally, I like my werewolves bipedal, okay? I think that they're scarier when they're more humanoid and just have a wolf-like appearance as opposed to being overgrown wolves, which is one of the other reasons why I just could not for the life of me get into Twilight. And that's without touching the glittery vampire subject. But The Howling has the bipedal werewolves. It has the werewolves that I really like, that I find scary. It has some interesting special effects. It has a really, really good plot. Um, in this particular movie, a news reporter who is working with the police to try to catch a serial killer, who we find out, and seeing as though it's a werewolf movie, it's implied that this, that homeboy's a werewolf. Um, she's traumatized after an encounter with him, and is subsequently sent to a commune to kind of rest and relax, and she's working with a therapist there. Well, it turns out the commune that she was sent to is a community of werewolves. So she is literally like one of the only humans there, surrounded by a pack of werewolves. And it's very interesting toward the end when you see the the alpha as a po fighting with other members of the pack, trying to like vie for control. You know, some of them want to stay away from hunting humans. Others want to remain feral werewolves. And it's very, very cool. It's very, very interesting. I will say this. From what I understand, An American Werewolf in London is going to be remade. It was a movie by John Landis, and it's... I don't think it needs a remake, but if it's going to be remade, I think that this is the way to do it. It's going to be remade by Zach Landis, John Landis' son. And I personally, seeing as though I've got a kid, I think that that's sweet. I think that's really awesome. But I don't think that An American Werewolf in London actually needs a remake. The Howling does. That is a movie that I think is in dire need of a remake. I think that the plot is good. The plot is there. I think that the special effects are incredibly dated. I think that the acting, for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, is pretty decent. This is a movie that I think would benefit from a 2019 treatment. Seeing as though we're going to be coming up there soon, and um, if nobody else wants to do it, <laughs> guys, I'll take the property. I'll do it for you. I'll give it to you. I'll give you your 2019-2020 Howling movie. It'll be wonderful. But I'm not going to do any of that spin-off crap. I'm talking about a legit remake slash reboot of The Howling. I think it's time, because there's so much good about this movie, but unfortunately, it being a 1980s movie, uh, the special effects are very, very dated. Like, for instance, in this scene here, where our protagonist's husband is being transformed into a werewolf in a sex scene. Interesting. Weird. Cool. The up-close effects are excellent, and then you get this weird, like animation thing as you're seeing him become a werewolf from afar. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to say to that, man. It just, it's a really gripping scene. It's, it has a lot of suspense and a lot of pure terror. It's a little bit erotic. And then you get cartoon werewolf transformation. It just really took me out of the scene. Uh, a scene that I thought otherwise was incredible. So, this movie desperately needs a reboot slash remake. 
I, give me a re something of the Howling, just not another bad sequel because the sequels for the most part are, oh god, they're terrible. But that's my opinion, man, um, and we're all entitled to them. I really, really, really liked this movie. I'm glad I watched it. I think it should be a staple in more people's lists. Unfortunately, I see why it's not because of the special effects and some hokey acting. Other acting that is actually still quite good even by today's standards. But that's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know down there in the comments below. Let me know your favorite werewolf movie. Uh, seeing as though there's not a whole lot, I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned like most of the ones that you guys are probably going to say, but say them anyway. Write down there in the comments. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this video. Vote for Sampire Yes or Sampire No, and I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. See ya.